Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel. Today we're going to be having a look at the Built Hamber Touch On product again, which we had a precursory kind of first impressions video on. This time we're going to explore it more, that now it's a bit more established, give you some hints and tips around the product, which I've got here, and also talk a little bit about Touchless, which you kind of has been designed to use with the uh, Touch On system. So let's get stuck into this video and tell you what it's all about. Oh, that's damn heavy. Welcome back to the channel guys. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Or if you're an existing viewer and you haven't subscribed, how dare you? Hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification. Thank you. So, Built Hamber released some products a while back. I think it was over a year ago. Two new products, Built Hamber Touchless, which we know is a bio-based, uh, sugar-based surfactant pre-wash. You spray over the car, oh. it uh, loosens off the dirt and then you pressure wash it off or low pressure wash indeed with this product. It's designed to be used if you don't have a pressure washer as well, which is something a little bit different. Um, and it gets off a big chunk of dirt before you go and make contact wash, which saves your paintwork from having all that dirt rubbed over it with a wash mitt. And it's a detailing fundamental thing. And if you're still in the camp that pre-washing your car is pointless, uh, it isn't. <laughs> Let's keep it simple. Now, I just want to delve into the interesting areas for me, because Built Hamber over here in the UK had the reputation of having the most powerful pre-wash system that was very affordable with that auto foam that you can see over here. Um, so it's very surprising for me that Pilt Hamber, when they had a market leading pre-wash, brought out another pre-wash. So the first question I had a sort of year and a half ago is why? <laughs> why? Um, and the answer is because new surfactants, new technologies come along that give them the opportunity to maybe create a product which is superior. That's the short answer. So why is Touchless maybe superior? Because I think Built Hamber rate it as a 9.6 out of 10 on the cleaning power and this auto foam is a 9.4. Do not quote me on that. I saw that on some Facebook page, I think. Um, but Built Hamber also state that... Um, the products can be different on different road films at different times of the year, at different geographies. You know, one might perform better on sandy dust, one might perform better on winter, greasy, salty road film. Whenever I've tested this, and I've tested it many times, I've found that Touchless has a slight edge, um, but other people disagree. So that's great, they're both pretty formidable. One other bit of inside information, guys on Touchless, there has been a revision tweak of it. Dun, dun, dun. So this is actually the latest iteration or version of the product. Is it completely different, John? No, um, it's got something to do with C numbers, chains and links, <laughs> something that went over my head. Um, but it, this might, you might notice, this is slightly foamier and you might notice it clings onto the car a little bit more. Do you need to go and ditch your half empty bottle of Touchless, you've got to run out and buy this. No, the difference is going to be very small, but I'm interested to see if you go and buy this now, if you can spot any differences between the old one. Um, so I'm interested to see that as well. Next up, at the same time, Built Hamber released this Touch On product, which essentially does two things. One, it cleans your car because it contains detergents. We'll tell you more about how you, we use it in a second, but it also adds protection at the same time. So is it a um, ceramic snow foam job? Well, it can be, yes. Is it a ceramic contact wash shampoo? Well, it can be, yes. Is it a ceramic spray and rinse uh, product, John? Well, it can be as well, yes. <laughs> so it's quite versatile. And one of the cool things I like about it, it costs £1.19 per sachet, um, but you're not paying for the water. You're just paying for the active ingredients. And it's also, that means, it, you know, you're not paying as well to transport a big heavy bottle of water around. You're just paying for tiny little sachets and they take up less space and stuff like that. So there's some good 
good little improvements there. So that's what the product is. Now I wanna co cover some specific details about how you can use it effectively and also some hacks around it, which basically give you a free bottle of product every time you use one of these. So they, they kind of work out ultra affordable. Stay tuned. Okay guys, so next I wanna talk about kind of how you use this and get the most out of it and what the risks are with spray and rinse type products. Um, now the first risk is point number one on the instructions. Now any spray and rinse product, vehicle must be cool and out of direct sunlight. Why? Will you imagine like some of the conditions that this is gonna be applied in? It could be applied in Egypt or you know Arizona or somewhere with like 50 degree heat and the panels on the car, you could cook an egg on them. When you spray it on there, normally when the panel's cool, you form a film, either by spreading it with pressure, pressure washer, or uh, perhaps a wash mitt with the bucket method. Uh, and that will give you a thin film of the product that you can't see that's gonna add gloss and add protection, etc. But if the product goes on and it isn't allowed to spread and you get like a you know, high concentrated droplet of it, which dries very quickly, then you can get a product footprint on there. Now, it's not the end of the world. This isn't like concrete. This, is a, this forms a very thin layer. And if you do get any spotting issues, it's water-based. So the first thing to, I would try if you catch it early is a glass cleaner, which are water-based and uh, contain a little bit of detergent, a little bit of alcohol solvent. So that'll probably shift it. If it doesn't, you could always use a bit of cleanser polish or something like that and just go over it. If you've got a machine polisher, that'll be ideal. We'll just go over it by hand and that will that will clear out any kind of residues. But you don't want that to happen. You want a good application. So follow the instructions. Today, it's sunny with some cloud. It's probably about 15 or 16 degrees, just about warm enough to wear a t-shirt and it's gonna be ideal to apply it. But I still won't let it dry on the surface. That's, that's the key thing. Now, the next step, number two, pre-wash your car with touchless cleaner. So that's a pre-wash snow foam, we know that. Does it have to be touchless? Well, I think, in my head, there's a reason they're recommending touchless. And to me, it's probably been the fact that touchless is completely free rinsing, whereas auto foam is, um, there's a cationic film left behind, okay? So don't panic too much about that cationic film because when you pre-wash with auto foam and then you go in with the auto wash soap and then you rinse again, you've done two rinses and then you towel dry your car, you get that, that film is kind of gone. But if you're just using touchless and then going straight on to touch on and you're using it in a contact wash with a bucket, so you're doing a very quick wash and putting the protection on that way, perhaps the fact that it's free rinsing means there's less filming on the car for when you're applying this. So it might be more suitable to use touchless. That's how I'm reading it. Can you use other pre-washes with it? Well, yes, but you're going off piste, so you don't know, never go off piste. <laughs> You don't know if the nature of that pre-wash unless they specify it, but I'm sure it'll be probably fine with other pre-washes. I'm gonna personally use it with touchless. Now, after you've pre-washed your car with touchless, you are gonna have removed a massive amount of dirt, somewhere, finger in the wind, between 90, maybe all the way up to, you know, 98% of all the dirt, but you can never get it completely clean without the contact wash. So they advise if further cleaning is required, use their normal contact wash shampoo. Auto wash, okay, is an option. I would recommend you do that. So we're at the business end now, guys, and there's two methods to actually apply this. The first is the quick and easy one, the lazy one, which works for me. You can apply it via a snow foam lance, your pressure washer system, um, or a pump you know, sprayer or a trigger sprayer. So what you do is you empty your 30 milliliter sachet into your snow foam lance, fill the rest up with water, uh, clean water, and then apply it low pressure. So you just spray it over the car, form a film of the product over there, um, and then rinse away and dry with a microfiber cloth. So it can be that simple. What you should notice is that the hydrophobicity of the car should be boosted so it will sit on top of extra protection. So, John, can I use this on top of my ceramic coating? Yes, and it's suitable for that because it has self-cleaning, so it should complement you know, the reason for using a ceramic coating. Will it sit on top of a, a conventional kind of paste wax or seal? Yes, it will still bond, ultimately, as always, with any protection products. 
they'll bond better if you have a completely clear prepped surface. But this is more of a topper product, so you know, if you've done full machine polishing on your car and all that sort of stuff, you're going to apply something like double speed or finny wax, and then you're going to use this as a maintenance product that will sit on top of it, if you like. Um, okay, so that's the first spray and rinse um, application. The second thing is you can empty this 30ml sachet into a 15 litre bucket, so that's like a good sized detailing bucket of warm water and apply using a noodle wash mitt, which are my kind of favoured ones, good safe method. Um, rinse and dry with a microfiber cloth, uh, which I did when I first kind of reviewed it, and it works pretty well. I'll say it's it's low foaming, and I'm glad to say Built Hamber actually describe it as low foaming, but foam essentially isn't what is going to be providing you with safety when you're contact washing a car. Okay, it's the lubrication within the detergents. That's something Built Hamber told me. You could put like 10 mil of their auto wash in one bucket and blast it up with your pressure washer and have loads of foam. And you, or you could put 10 mil in another bucket and not blast it up. The lubrication's kind of exactly the same. I still struggle with that one because I like, you know, I like all the foam with the contact wash. Um, and finally, guys, they recommend not applying more than once a month. Why? Because you're just going to be building up excess amounts of products. So it's quite a powerful thing. Don't use it every week. It's just not required. So once you start to see your hydrophobic kind of properties dull down and you want to get give that boost to it, then a month later, just apply some more. Um, car must not be allowed to dry by air as well, which is important. So don't spray it on, rinse it off and leave it. Never do that when you're washing a car, um, you know. So towel dry afterwards and that will just ensure that everything's okay. You can also, when you finish, get the Built Hamber quick detailer, use it as a sort of uh, final spray and shine if you like. I use that down at one to nine so I really get my money's worth out of it. So that's covering how you use it. Now I want to cover a really cool hack. So next up, tips and tricks with these guys. So I personally think you're better off pre-washing with touchless, contact washing with auto wash, and then using the spray and rinse method, perhaps. It's up to you, but that's how I would do it. One thing I'd be careful of is do not blast this all over your front windscreen because you've not had a chance to deep clean your glass. Um, so you typically have that greasy film over there. And whenever we know with glass sealants and stuff like that, preparation is always the key. So if you're, I've said this before with other spray and rinses, I tend to stand at the front first and spray it onto the roof, going away from your windscreen. And then when you rinse, rinse away from the front windscreen, then you don't get any filming issues when your wiper blades hit it later on. If you do get it over your front windscreen, once, once you finish washing the car and it's all dry, just take a glass cleaner, a clean microfiber cloth, and give your glass a good clean to kind of minimize that. So it's not the end of the world, but that's a tip. The next tip, guys, is if you use this in your snow foam lance and you've, you've got you know, a reservoir full of liquid, you're not gonna need to use all of that liquid, okay? So what I would suggest is you'll probably get through half or three quarters, depending on your snow foam lance, Leave the liquid in there, don't tip it away. Get a clean bucket, spray this into the bucket, then take that solution, get a funnel, pour it into a bottle. And you've got the exact kind of PIR that the product's designed to be used at in a trigger sprayer. And you could potentially have about five liters of it, depending on how much you use. You know, so you could fill up five bottles or three bottles or whatever. Now, if you go and buy a bottle of um, spray and rinse, you know, and it's ready mixed, you'll pay about 20 quid. So the fact that you could get multiple free bottles of spray and rinse every time you use this means that the value for money is absolutely phenomenal. Um, so I love the idea of getting all of these free bottles of um, protection that I can use as drying aid. I can experiment and maybe even dilute it down a little bit more, or I could experiment with increasing you know the dilution in a trigger sprayer and using it a little bit more controlled you know when i'm put when i'm putting it on and i'm spreading it and i'm buffing it so you can play around with it a little bit that's the best tip and that's why i think this becomes phenomenal value because potentially you can get you know like i said bottles and bottles of free product 
Another thing with this touch on product, guys, as well as adding protection, it's going to add some shine and some gloss. And you'll get that when you dry the car and buff it out with your, your towel microfiber. Normally they say LSPs give you that kind of final 10%. Well, I can actually give you some figures on it and I'll overlay you the uh, Gonio photo meter that we have on the channel used on a test panel, which is actually reasonably glossy. And I took a couple of readings. We went from 83.9, I might have got that wrong, I'll overlay it, uh, and 84 dot something, up to 85.9 and one reading of 88. So yeah, it will give you that final bit of gloss. So it's not all about protection. There's a bit of, sh of shine element to it as well. That's it now guys, so I've washed and protected my car in less than an hour. I, I'm not even sweating. The car is easy to dry and hopefully I'm going to be building up a protective layer that should make it easier to clean going forward. The chemical cost is probably being less than pound fifty with all the detergents and uh, the, the um, touch on as well. And I've got a three litre of spray sealant that, or drying aid that I can use, you know, whenever I like. <laughs> which would normally cost me, you know, 15, 20 quid or whatever. So uh, it's done a good job. What am I going to do now? I'm going to dress the tyres. I'm going to test out some glass cleaners and put my feet up because I haven't had to spend all day uh, buffing <laughs> on the car. So definitely spray and rinses have their place. I've said before, in the winter, you can go mad with them because you don't have to worry about drying. In the summer months, which we're approaching here in the UK, um, you know, on those really nice hot days where you're above 20 degrees and stuff, just be a little bit careful with them. Don't let them dry. And, uh, you know, lots of you have used them and they make a lot of sense. So hopefully you got some good tips on touch on. And can I notice that touchless is a little bit thicker? Yes, I can. Yeah, quite interesting. So uh, it's still not like the thickest foam on the market, but... It's got a bit more, um, it's got a bit more, uh, <laughs> what's the word? Foam. So there we go, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'll see you soon on the Forensics Detailing channel. And if you've got any more questions about any of these built hamburger products, put them in the comments as well, and I'll try and answer them. Thank you very much. Bye for now. Where was I when you